boys and girls, guys and gals, and everything else, even pets. I don't know. Pets, yes. Welcome to another episode of the Gold Ball Hunting Podcast. I'm Brent Abel. That dude over there is Jeff Jackwich. Soon to be back in Northern California. We're all bracing yeah. for that. We're all bracing for it. You know? Yeah. It's going to be a high impact boom. Boom. Coming in Coming hot. Coming in hot. Ooh. Coming in hot. Going to tuck and roll. <laughs> so look, if you're in California, specifically if you're in Northern California, yep. uh, the San Francisco Bay Area, and you're looking for the good stuff because whoever is teaching you right now has got you thinking, well, I see it on TV. That's what they're doing on TV. That's what I see Rafa doing. So that's good enough for him. It's good. It's got to be good enough for you, right? So we're working on the, the full Western windshield wiper. Here we go. If that's frustrating you, I would suggest getting in touch <laughs> with Jeff Jacklidge and uh, spending some time this, this fall, this winter, and early next spring on a court with him in the San Francisco Bay Area. And let's get, let's get real Let's get, this is what actually works. <clears throat> right. And uh, let's get to it. So the best way to get in touch with you, let us know at goldballhunting.com. Is that, is, is that the yeah, best yeah, yeah. way for, for yeah, someone yeah, who's right looking now, for yeah, yeah. When we, some on-court instruction? Then, yeah. yeah, once I get back there and we're, um, we're, I'm back in, in, the, in the saddle there, then... Um, Next month, uh, October. Yeah. But actually, that's uh, that's fine. That's that, that works. Let that us totally know at works. goldballhunting.com. Yeah, totally. Okay. All right, cool. We're not going to do with the uh, Jacklets 365 thing. Don't want to get that out there. No, nah, not yet. Okay. All right, good. All right. I just spilled the beans, man. I just I just uncovered him. I just unmasked Jeff. Uh, right. That, that was the, that was an Easter egg, right? Yeah. Like a movie Easter egg, right? right. In a, in a, in a, no, I think right now that's really that's easy because you know they're getting the emails from us anyway. The right. email link is there. Boom. You know, I see it every day. Okay. Cool. Well, listen, guys. Thanks for hanging out with us again. We got another episode. Uh, we want to tee up for you here. Um, we're 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 chatting about the slice backhand and the beauty of it and the reason you got to have it and the reason why if you're thinking well maybe I should go two-hander or just play more one-handed toppers is not going to pay off it's going to be way faster uh yeah. i'd say the word easier but it is i mean it's way if it's i guess if it's faster it's easier uh to be able to to really develop a a true slice backhand that not only skids through the bounce doesn't hang up doesn't float and sit short, but but has a little skid to it. It's offensive. You're going to be way more accurate with it, way more consistent. And there's so much more you can do. Certainly, you you you'd probably need to top one once in a while. Right. But that's so far and few between all the times of, if you're right-handed that when a ball's hit on your left, that you've actually got it. And I think think you know Jeff. So many players out there think, well, I've got to have this because if I don't, then how am I going to win a point outright? That's right. You're probably not. Probably not. Okay, this is not, you know, just because you go yeah. topper does not, that, that doesn't signify winner. No. Doesn't, no, doesn't mean automatic winner. No, and you really got to you got to see you got to see the context too of what that means, you know, and and so sometimes, you know, it's used you know, just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Depending on the context of the point construction, what's going on? Do I need the ball over there quicker or do I need the ball over there not as quicker? Again, I just need it over there again. <laughs> I need it over there again, but I actually need a little more time right now to, to get back in the point because the guy hit a good ball. I could hit the topper, but I, I don't know that that's going to serve me as well right now in this scenario that I, I should be actually um, hitting a slice on the, a big full court chip, maybe, you know, something in that in that framework. Yeah, so. I mean, I, I, you know, I can't I can't I don't have any data to prove it and I've never you know dug into it. But my belief is that the topper takes more work. It takes more physical effort than and I had to create Larry Turville on a on a interview couple months ago and I said well why don't you top more he said it's too much work right <laughs> it's too much work now look once in a while that's fine 
that then it's not too much work. But if you're thinking that the way you're going to hit rally balls all day off your backhand side and actually do some damage, which means number one, being consistent. Number two means being accurate. And number three means being efficient. The topper's not going to do that for you. It's just right. not. I mean, so anyway, um, that's my little rant on again, third day in a row. We've got to have, we got to have a good slice backhand. And, and if you don't right now, don't worry about it. We're going to, we're going to clean that up for you next week, starting the week of uh, September 9th, Monday. Yep. Uh, we got three secrets we want to share with you about, about the slice backhand. And one big thing that we really got to convince you of. And uh, I know that we can. Uh, do that but so Jeff listen if I mentioned the coaching call yet today on this I don't think I have I don't think you have so before we get into today's uh, topic subject is yeah we got a free coaching call we want to offer you no charge it's on us free free yeah uh, no free. strings nothing look you know we just want to get you on there we want to help set you on the path to get that result you want in your game could be singles could be doubles could be mixed. I don't know. There's a lot of different reasons why there's one thing in your game that you're not getting figured out that you got to get figured out. And that's what we want to do in the coaching call. The way to do that is to go over to goldballhunting.com, drop in your first name and email address, click that button you'll see right below, and you'll get right. access to our calendar where you can cherry pick a date and time that works best for you. Yep. So, um, what do you want to talk about today? We're 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 still in this Umag thing and and going yeah, over. Yeah, Umag I'm, thing. And, I'm actually and, uh, leaving. You know, today? I'm, Today's Friday. Uh, I'm leaving tomorrow. Holy Smokies! Yeah. Lufthansa, San Francisco <laughs> to Frankfurt to Trieste tomorrow afternoon. Lufthansa. Um. <laughs> would you like some? <laughs> would you like another sausage with your? With, right, right. Not, 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 not. Are, are they, did they actually grill the brats on the plane as you're flying over a little, little hibachi I sh- cue? I sure as hell hope not. I hope there's no <laughs> open flame. In, I am fortunate enough to go right. business class on this thing, and I'm yeah. hoping they're going, well, That's hey, only in first class, right? Yeah. Oh, boy, your business, <laughs> great. You're, you, you get the open flame meal. No, yeah, no. Exactly. Yeah, well, I think, um, you know, we want to dive into today um, is, you know, we're, we're on the slice. You know, you're going to be on the, you know, the beautiful orange clay at Umag. And it's beautiful. You know, they play a pro event there, too, every year, which is stellar. It's when it's a greatly attended event. And, and, um, and, and that court. And by you can the just... way, by the way, last year, our venue, right? So they have four or five different age groups there. Right, they have the sixty fives, which is the youngest. See, we're yep. we're we're in the super seniors, meaning we're special. That's because you guys are special. We're special. <laughs> so they're sixty five, seventy, seventy five, and eighty. I don't think I think it's those four groups. Maybe maybe there's eighty fives, uh, men and women, and so you know, like I said a couple of days ago, in the seventies alone, there's twenty four. There's 24 yeah. countries, right? And we, and we all. I mean, everyone plays every day for six days. So, um, so you need a pretty a good matches. size. There's a, here's a pretty big venue there every, every day, right? So right. there's like, I think there's six different venues around Umag, and Umag's a little town, wow. little seaside yeah. town that's going. We love tennis, right? Right. They got these red, these orange clay courts all over the place. And then one of the venues is, as you just alluded to, is what they call the ATP Stadium. And yeah. it's this bowl. And in fact, on the, you know, the day before we all walk out, like we're all in the Olympics, right? Waving right. all these different countries. Of course, the only people in the stands are like a few spouses and maybe a friend or two. <laughs> <laughs> it's hysterical, but it's great. It's great. And, and, uh, but there's, so there's obviously one court inside the stadium and then outside the stadium, they've got, I'm going to say, you know, another dozen courts. Last year right. we were at, uh, we were at a different venue. We were not there this year. We're at the ATP stadium venue, nice. which means that if we do play a match inside the stadium is there is a, a live stream. Which Boom-ski. I will let everyone know if that happens. Yeah, please do. That'd be awesome to yeah. be able to uh, watch and um, you know comment. Yeah, Brenny, Brenny, can you stay back maybe, for one maybe more? Maybe we ball? should. Uh, yeah, 
Yeah. Not gonna do Circle it. the mark. It was only two feet inside the baseline. Maybe that's not an approach. <laughs> or maybe you shouldn't have called that one out. Anyway. Yes. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. So, so you know, hooking back into the yeah. you know, here you are. You're on this great facility on the on the dirt. You know, and so let's you know the slice, and then the the invisible transition into the dropper. Oh God. The pain, the pain. Tell yeah. me a story. Tell uh, me, tell me a good story yeah. where you know maybe somebody was really getting ready to pissed off at you because you were just laying into them with the <laughs> the knife, <laughs> you know, the surgical drop. Yeah. Well, look, um, I, I mentioned yesterday about how Jeff Moore told me, "Look, man, why don't you stay back and count out four, right?" And so once I started doing that, getting comfortable staying in the point and realizing, well, wait a minute. I'm hardly even getting to four before the guy over there doesn't get the ball back and play. But, right. the, and, and finally, once we kind of got into, you know, kind of some, some of the better teams, what I realized is that, is that, all right, well, this guy's got, he's getting everyone back. Three is coming back. Four is coming back. But what I'm starting to realize is that, is that especially if you have showed him the first couple of slice backhands that they're deep, he's thinking early in the match, another one's coming. And then you right. go with the same look and you go with a, f- and I'm spitting yep. all over the laptop. Yeah, but that's stuff. how good it feels. Uh, yeah. yeah, there's stuff coming out. And and you drop him. And now all of a sudden he's, he's, he's starting to back him. He's going, whoa. And he's, you can see him trying to gather himself and he's he's flying in. And, uh, and either gets to it and just pops one up and you go, well, let's see how much pain do I want to inflict here? (laughs) Do I want to go to the open court? I could do that. And the point would be over, or I can lob, I can feather over his backhand and let him go back and get it. And tease him with like, it's almost in reach. I'm a jerk sometimes when I'm not that much of a brat. So anyway, but, but then what happens is once he, once he believes that this is a thing that you have. You right. have the ability to make it look like another deep slice backhand's coming or a dropper out of the same right. look. Then what happens is now all of a sudden he's starting to play in closer. He's got to, he's got to honor that possibility. Right. And, and then when you make it kind of look like, I think I'm going to drop. So you're kind of going, you know, a little Hollywood right. on it. You're, you're, it's, you know, you're kind of acting on it. And then you go ahead and you play it drop. I mean, you play it deep. Yeah, play the drive, right. The slice, and, yeah. And you don't go to a corner. You go, wherever that dude is, I'm going deep on this thing. Right. And it just, you can see the look of like, oh, God darn it. And, you know, there's no getting out of the right. way. It's kind of, it's just backing up. And then you're coming in right. and playing whatever he gives you. And now you're playing a drop volley. And, and you can just feel, you can kind of feel the pain over there. Right. I played a South African guy um, in one of the later matches. This guy was good. I mean, a big serve and a big forehand. And so the whole thing was, look, let's just work the ball. Let's work the ball more to his backhand side. And uh, he had a decent, but not it wasn't big. It's like, you know, the forehand was. So right. I knew once I got over there, I'm in charge. I'm right. in charge now. And I would play the couple of deeps and then I play a short. And then the next point I play, I play a, a return to serve dropper. And so the guy really then started thinking, well, I got to serve bigger because I don't right. want to allow him to have the control to get it over here to that side. Right. You know, or he would start to, uh, you know, if, if, if he did get a forehand, he'd go, I got to go for it. I absolutely got to go for right. this thing. I cannot allow him to stay in the point. And the next thing you know is now all of a sudden you're getting double faults. Not all the time, but you're getting enough to no, where you but... know that your stuff's working. And he's missing some right. forehands. And you just kind of go, yeah. you know, if I didn't have the slice backhand deep or the slice backhand dropper, there's no way I'm in this match. None. Right. Right. And plus it's on clay, yeah. right? So so you're, I mean, look, we we've we've talked about how much more efficient the slice backhand is than the topper. Still, when you're on clay, unlike hard court, 
you know, there's that thing where you got to stay on balance. You got to have good balance because right. if you get off balance, you're slipping and sliding. So there's this extra little exertion. There's, there's the, right. There's also that extra little moment of not going anywhere when you want to go someplace. That's right. Because you got to, you've got to drop your center of gravity a little bit, get the feet out a little wider. But there's also your feet slip a little bit. You're pushing off, and it's you're not going anywhere for. A little fraction. Right. That means the ball is dropping. Gravity is working. Right. And so all those factors. So, you know, when you when you, you know, work that ball into that backhand corner on the guy, you know, you're leading them down the primrose path. You know, two or three of those, man. Yeah, listen, no, let's just trade jabs. It's gonna be great. It's gonna be beautiful. Come to Umag. We'll hit some we'll hit some slice backhand. It's gonna be beautiful. <laughs> Oops. There you go. Little appetizer. Here's a little here's a little little starter for you right <laughs> but i think i think players you know i think players miss the miss the opportunity and don't understand like you have to set the stage for using your secondary strokes you know and the secondary strokes are you know hitting intentionally a shorter slice off the court drop shot um you know the 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 more offensive maybe the lob that's not actually a lob but just the stretch ball over the guy's backhand so those are all secondary things, you know, that, that are worked and built off of your primary strokes. And so what are you showing in your primaries that are setting up the opportunity to just open up the match wide open for yourself? Right. And, and now the guy is just really, you know, off, off his feet, you know. Well, look, I mean, it's just not it's the benefits of having the slice back in and then being able to drop shot. It's just not those two. Like I said before, once you start showing these things, now all of a sudden he's going, well, wait a minute. I can't hang in here with, with this slice backhand trade thing here. So what happens is now, like I said, he's trying to serve bigger. He's trying to return right. bigger. I'm actually serving out wide to his forehands big because I want him out there and I want him going, here's my chance to bring my big ass forehand to the point. Right. He does. Which means, which means he's off the court getting yes. you the ball really nice and quick. Yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. And so um, I think that there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of benefits that we don't consider sometimes right. um, off of just one shot. And yeah. uh, a, lot of, a lot of benefits are not only what you can do, but a lot of benefits are the, are the pressure, the cumulative pressure that you put on your opponent right. for them thinking, I got to go extra. I got to right. go to a level that I've played up there maybe one time last Thursday, but I'm right. not up there. I'm not, I'm not playing up there all the time. Right. So um, anyway, this South, the South African guy after the match was just, I could tell him he was getting frustrated and, and a uh, little, little bit of a temper boy, right? He had a little thing. Yeah. yeah it might've been a couple of racket releases, you know, that kind of thing. Ah, uh, you know, yeah. but after the it, match, it, it, it was, Did you buy him a beer to settle him down? I bought him a, a I think it's called Andrushka. It's the, it's, the, it's the big can of beer. I think I might have bought him something. And we sat down and just, you know, it's just hysterical sitting down with someone whose language, I mean, obviously they speak English in South Africa, right. but but it's just a different different tone and inflection and all this stuff. Right. And, uh, and he just gone, man, you hurt me bad today. You hurt me bad. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> he says, but, you know, I, I said, I, I, I learned some stuff. So, yeah. um, all right, guys. Well, listen, I would love to hear from you. Jeff and I would both love to hear from you. Comment section, you know, what's going on with your slice backhand? You know, what is the big problem? What's the number one thing that you've not figured out? You know, right. kind of what's that result? And maybe what's something that you're being taught to do that, yeah, it's just like, wait, what? what? It, it doesn't compute because it's not, it's right. not transferring over to getting the result you want. Right. And I, I think, and I think the real result everyone's looking for is, is I like to be able to make this thing skid a little bit. You know, I like to be able to be yeah. offensive. It's just not a floater. It's just not a total defensive floater. It's, it's, I want to inflict a little pain. I want to, you know, I want to get the ball down. I want, I want that guy over there, especially the guy who's been taught, well, we're going mm -hmm. raw of forehand, dude. We're going full Western. 
Hmm. Right. What if I can't hmm. slide this thing down to that grip? Wonder what that might look like. Right. So. Yeah. But anyway, we definitely want to hear from you. And again, you know, whether you're you're at YouTube, just just drop it into the comment section. Let us know. Yeah. Um, if you're uh, listening to the audio version. Uh, just review this, you know, review the thing, let us know there, or shoot us an email, let us know at goldballhunting.com, what's on your mind. You know, what's that thing you're not figuring out? What's the result you're not getting? And um, we'd love to help you out. We, we, yeah. we're, we're offering a free coaching call. Uh, 10, 12, 15 minutes, yeah. whatever it takes uh, to help set you in the path to get the result you want. Just go right. over to goldballhunting.com, drop in a first name and email address, click the the button, right, and you'll get access to our online that calendar. It's just that easy. Bumshke, bumshke. <laughs> you get to cherry pick a date and time that works best for you. On that, Jeff, what do you want to find folks to do immediately? Like us, share us, please subscribe. Let us know what you think, as Brenny just said, down below, because we do want to hear what you got to say. If you're on iTunes and Stitcher, please rate and review. Dudes, dudettes. Get out there today. Help someone else have a spectacular day. Jeff, we're doing this again tomorrow. I'm in. <laughs>